What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the best damn Abyssal Sire guide ever. In this video, we are going to be checking out everything to do with the Abyssal Sire. Throughout this video, we will be checking out hard requirements, suggested requirements, location and how to get there, suggested gear setups, mechanics and attacks, boss room layout, and example fights and kills, all of which can be found in the description below via timestamp links, so you can jump to whatever you are looking for. Without further ado, let's get started. Hard Requirements for the Abyssal Sire hard requirements, there is actually only one hard requirement, which is level 85 Slayer or higher. You cannot be assigned Abyssal Demons without having a Slayer level of 85. You can, however, use a Wild Pie to kill normal Abyssal Demons. However, all Slayer bosses are task only, so you will need a Slayer task to kill the Abyssal Sire. This next one actually isn't really a hard requirement, but it is a hard requirement for me and that would be to start the Fairy Tale 2 quest to cure a queen. And the reason for this being is there are two ways to enter the Abyssal Nexus, and that would be one through a fairy ring, which we will cover in a bit, or through the Abyss. In order to enter through the Abyss, you would have to take all of your valuable gear into the wilderness for a few levels, teleport using the Zamorak Mage, which will give you a skull and drain your prayer. So all in all, it is not a safe method to reach the Abyssal Sire. Suggested requirements. For the Abyssal Sire suggested requirements, what you see on the screen is what I would suggest you have at a minimum. Level 85 attack, level 85 strength, level 80 defense, level 80 ranged, level 92 magic, and level 70 prayer. 92 magic is for the casting of Blood Barrage, which is a nice to have, but not necessarily need to have. As far as that goes, 88 magic will actually suffice for the Shadow Barrage spell. 92 gives you the Blood Barrage, which will give you the ability to heal, which we will cover later. For 70 prayer, this will be to use the Piety Prayer. Location and how to get there. The first method of getting there that we will cover is how I don't want you to get there, which I mentioned earlier. You'll see here on the map that you will have to jump the Wilderness Ditch, go to the Zamorak Mage, and then on the second map here, this is the Abyss. You will have to travel to the southern end of the Abyss in the center to enter the Abyssal Nexus. Once again, if you do use this method, you will have to take all of your gear through the Wilderness and you will get Scald on your way to the Abyssal Nexus. Our second and most preferred way of getting to the Abyssal Sire is going to be by using the Fairy Ring with the code DIP. This will put you at the south center of the Abyssal Nexus. You'll see here on the screen there are four different paths you can take, each one ending in an Abyssal Sire. Sometimes people will be there, sometimes people won't. It's not a very crowded boss, but you can get to the Abyssal Sire by following any of these red paths. Suggested Gear Setups for our first gear setup, we will check out the low tier gear and inventory setup. For our helmet, we will want a Slayer helmet and we will want this to be imbued so we also get the bonus to ranged. Ava's Accumulator, Amulet of Glory, Zamorak Blessing, Toxic Blowpipe with Adamant Darts or better, Black Dragon Hide Top and Bottom, Barrow's Gloves, Snakeskin Boots, and a Brimstone Ring. Over in the inventory, we have a Torag's Plate and Legs, but any Barrow's Top and Bottom will do, Fire Cape, Dragon Boots, Arc Light, and a Dragon Defender. As for our potions, Divine Ranging, Divine Super Combat, Antidote Plus Plus, three Prayer Potions, and two Stamina Potions. As for our food, we can take nine Sharks. We want to leave a couple of inventory spots open for drops, 5,000 Air Runes, and in the Rune Pouch, Death, Bloods, and Souls. This will be for casting both Blood Barrage and Shadow Barrage or any other Shadow and Blood spell. Also, we have 10 Teleport to House tablets, and this will be to get out after your trip. This is the bare minimum that I personally would attempt to do the Abyssal Sire with. Your kills will be long, but they can be done. Next up is our medium tier setup for the gear and inventory. In the helmet slot, once again, a Slayer helmet imbued for the bonus to range as well. Ava's Assembler, Amulet of Fury, Rada's Blessing, 1, 2, 3, or 4 will work, or any other blessing that you do have. Toxic Blowpipe with Adamant Darts or better. Blessed Dragonhide Top and Bottom, any of them will do. Barrow's Gloves, Blessed Dragonhide Boots, and an Archer's Ring imbued. In the inventory, we have a Fighter's Torso, Bando's Tassets, Fire Cape, Berserker's Ring, Dragon Boots, Arc Light, Dragon Defender, and a Bando's God Sword. 
for our potions. Divine Ranging, Divine Super Combat, Antidote Plus Plus, one Prayer Potion, and two Stamina Potions. As for our Sharks, only need five with this setup, depending on how well you do at the Abyssal Sire, but five should suffice. 5,000 Air Runes once again, and in the Rune Pouch, Death, Bloods, and Souls, for Shadow and Blood Barrages, and House Teleports to get out. For our high tier setup, this is what will be considered best in slot. Slayer Helmet Imbued, Ava's Assembler, Necklace of Anguish, Rada's Blessing 4, Toxic Blowpipe with Adamant Darts or better, Armadale Chest and Legs, Barrow's Gloves, Pegasian Boots, and an Archer's Ring Imbued. Over in the inventory, Bandos Chestplate, Bandos Tassets, Infernal Cape, Amulet of Torture, Berserker's Ring Imbued, Primordial Boots, Scythe of Vitor, Dragon Warhammer, Avernic Defender, and the Arclight. People tend to bring the Arclight with best in slot setups in case the Dragon Warhammer special attacks miss. You will actually do more DPS with zero Dragon Warhammer specs with an Arclight and a Vernic Defender over the charged Scythe of Vitor. As for the potions, one Divine Ranging, one Divine Super Combat, Antidote Plus Plus, one Prayer Potion, and two Stamina Potions, five Sharks, and once again our Air Runes, Bloods, Deaths, and Souls for the Shadow and Blood spells, and teleport to house to get out after your kills. Our final setup will actually be what I use at the Abyssal Sire and what you will see me use in the video. Slayer Helmet Imbued, Assembler Max Cape, Necklace of Anguish, Rada's Blessing 4, Toxic Blowpipe with Dragon Darts, Armadale Chestplate and Chainskirt, Barrow's Gloves, Primordial Boots, and a Berserker's Ring Imbued. In my inventory, Bando's Chestplate, Bando's Tassets, Fire Cape, Max Cape, Amulet of Torture, Scythe of Vitor, Dragon Warhammer, Avernic Defender, and the Arclight. One Divine Ranging, one Divine Super Combat, Antidote Plus Plus, Prayer Potion, two Stamina Potions, five Sharks, 5,000 Air Runes, Deaths, Bloods, and Souls for the Blood and Shadow spells, and in that place of the House Tablets, I will actually have a Construction Cape. I actually prefer to use this setup because I do plenty of DPS and I don't have to worry about the Pegasian and Archer's Ring switches because I do have 99 range and rigor, so those are not going to affect me that much as to where it puts me behind on killing the respiratory systems, which we will check out in just a bit. Also, I do have 99 prayers, so I hardly ever use a dose of prayer potion at the Abyssal Sire. As you're killing the Abyssal Sire, you may want to gauge how much prayer you actually do use and gauge your prayer potions on that. It is pretty hard to tell you how many prayer potions to take based on I actually don't know your skill level or how many times you've killed this or what you're actually doing. So take that into consideration. And last but not least, if none of these gear setups suit you, you can check in the description below. There is a link to Abyssal Sire Gear Progression Guide. You can check this out and see what items work and what order they work in. There will also be a card at the end of the video. Boss Room Layout For the Boss Room Layout, there are a few things that we want to note. First, the Abyssal Sire is located in the northern center of the room. The next thing are the tentacles we want to take note of. These will deal melee damage to you during phase one if you get close to them and the Abyssal Sire is not stunned, and also during phase three and four. Phase two, they are not active. Additionally, the respiratory systems are in the green boxes. These are what you will have to take out before you are able to continue on to phase two of the fight and onward. And last, you'll want to notice the marked yellow tiles. If you stay on these tiles, the tentacles will not bother you. They will not be able to reach you. The southern grouping of four tiles is for phase three and four of the fight. As far as the northern two tiles, I just kind of use those as a reference to stand when I begin phase two of the fight. Mechanics and attacks. The first mechanic will have to do with beginning the fight with the Abyssal Sire, and this will be disorienting or stunning the Sire, whichever you prefer to call it. In order to do this, you will need to use a shadow spell from the ancient spellbook to do this. There are four shadow spells, and they each have an increased chance of successfully stunning the Abyssal Sire. Shadow Rush will give you a 25% chance, Shadow Burst a 50% chance, Shadow Blitz 75%, and Shadow Barrage is a 100% chance. You will do this only at the beginning of the fight and while you are restunning the Abyssal Sire to make sure you can kill all of the respiratory systems without the Sire waking up. 
Our next mechanic or part of the fight is going to be the respiratory systems. There are four respiratory systems as we saw in the boss room layout. These must be taken out before phase two can begin. They are very easy to kill. They can be taken down with any kind of ranged attack where the blowpipe is preferred with adamant darts or better or any trident style weapon. They have 50 hit points, 80 defense and no magic defense to speak of. The next mechanic is going to be during phase two of the fight, and this is going to be the Abyssal Sire's melee attacks. You will be using Protect from Melee throughout phase two. The Abyssal Sire can still hit through Protect from Melee with the right claw and tendril through Protect from Melee can deal up to six damage. And when both tendrils flick at you can deal up to 26 damage through Melee Prayer or 66 if your Protect from Melee is not active. So make sure you always have your Protect from Melee on during phase two of the fight. The next mechanic we will cover for the Abyssal Sire is going to be the Juvenile Spawns. These can occur, possibly, in Phase 1 and 2, and will always occur during Phase 3 and 4. For Phase 1 and 2, the Abyssal Sire will spit them out of his mouth. You'll want to kill these as quickly as possible. After 12 seconds, they will turn into Scions, and they get a little bit more annoying. For Phase 3 and 4, the Abyssal Sire spawns these as a form of attack, as the Abyssal Sire cannot attack itself. We will just leave these throughout Phase 3 and 4 and focus on the Abyssal Sire. The next mechanic is going to be the Miasma Pools. Just like the Juvenile Spawns, these can possibly occur during Phase 1 and 2, and will always occur during Phase 3 and 4. For Phase 1 and 2, it can be random. All you will have to do is move two squares out of the way. For Phase 3... The Miasma spawns will continue throughout Phase 3 until the Abyssal Sire is taken below 140 HP. For Phase 4, the Miasma pools will only occur three times, and then you do not have to move anymore. You can finish off the kill. Our last mechanic is going to signal the start of Phase 4, the last phase of the fight, and this will be the Teleport and the Explosion. Once the Abyssal Sire is taken below 140 hit points, the Abyssal Sire will teleport you directly in front of him. You will then just take two steps backwards. The Abyssal Sire will explode, but you will be out of range, so no damage will be taken. Be advised that if you are in range of this attack, you can take upwards of 70 damage. And the last thing that I want to mention before we move on is going to be Blood Barraging. Here in Phase 3 and 4, if you do get low on HP, feel free to take a couple of steps back and then just Blood Barrage some of the Scions to heal up. It is no problem, it just takes a little extra time. Example Fights and Kills all right, everybody, here I am at Fairy Ring DIP. So this will take you right to the Abyssal Nexus. And what we're going to do here is we are going to head over to one of the Abyssal Sires. So I'm going to take off running and I'm going to drink one of my stamina potions now. That way I'll have enough run for the entirety of the fight. And I will go ahead and jump to starting the kill. All right, so this is going to be example fight number one. For this one, I am only going to use one Shadow Barrage here. So we're going to go ahead and use one Shadow Barrage. And we're waiting, waiting for the tentacles. Go ahead and range pot. Waiting, waiting, and they're finally down. So that's why you want to use two to get the fight going. Turn on my Rigor Prayer, and we're going to go ahead and take out all of the respiratory systems. So we've got one. I'm going to head down to the southern one and take this one out. And then I'm going to start heading back up towards the Sire. What I want to do here is I want to restun the Sire so it stays down for the next two respiratory systems. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the northeast one here. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off the southeastern respiratory system. All right, that's taken out. So I'm going to go ahead and run up to the square here, put my melee gear on, Dragon Warhammer equipped, and turn on special attack, super combat potion, and I have my quick burst set to protect from melee and piety. Go ahead, one spec, hit that one, that's good. And two specs, and got them both. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Scythe of Vitor here. Didn't miss spec, so I don't have to use the Arc Light. Abyssal Sire is under 200 HP now. Gonna head down here, protect from range on now. He's gonna root himself, and here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and hit. And then we're going to move, get off that Miasma pool. I want to right click here and then walk here to make sure you don't click on any of these spawns. And there's the teleport. I'm going to run back two steps. There's the opening and I'm back on. So one hit, two hits, I'm going to move off the Miasma pool. One hit, move off the Miasma pool. One hit, and that is the kill. 10 chili potatoes. Nice. 
So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and teleport to my house, recharge my stats, and return for our second to kill. All right, so here I am, I am back. I'm gonna go ahead and Shadow Barrage twice this time. One and two, and there go the tentacles, very quick. So Rigor on, gonna start with the respiratory systems again. Northwest first for me, doesn't matter how you do them, whatever's the most comfortable for you. I'm gonna go ahead and head to the Southwest one now. Take this one out real quick and head back up. Make sure as we're passing by, we restun the Abyssal Sire and then over to the Northeast respiratory system. And down to Southeast. Forgot to stand in a pot earlier. Go ahead and hit that. Make sure I have enough run. And back up into melee position. Over to the melee gear with the Dragon Warhammer. Get my special attack ready. Quick prayers, protect from melee and piety. And special attack number one, missed. Special attack number two, missed. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the arc light and there is a juvenile spawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill that. Oh, he spawned another one right behind that. So we definitely wanna make sure we take those out. If they're around for 12 seconds, they will turn into the scion, which are a bit more annoying. So back on the sire, this is gonna be a long kill. Sire does have a decent defense level. So without any special attacks for defense reduction, kills could take quite a long time. But all in all, it was a good example for the spawns coming out. Maybe we'll get lucky for the clip and get a miasma pool too. Yep, there it is. So move off of that. Make sure you're two squares away here. And 270, almost under 200. One more hit should do it. And under 200. So move down here. Make sure to be on these yellow marked squares. Protect from range on, and on the sire, off the miasma pool. Remember to right click walk here when you have to move. Move over here, and there's under 140, so there's the teleport. Step back two steps, and back on the sire. There's our first miasma pool. Miasma pool number two, get off of that. And miasma pool number three, and that will be the last one, and the kill is over. Ending words. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up this guide to the Abyssal Sire. If you did not know how to kill the Abyssal Sire before watching this video, I hope that you do now. Please do remember that there is a gear progression guide for the Abyssal Sire. Also, the link is in the description below or on a card on the end screen. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't done so yet, tap that subscribe button on your way out. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.